Over to you, Uta. Thank you, Grete. Welcome, everyone, on this special day of the solstice. A solstice is like standing on a pinnacle, a time of silence, centering, observation. Yeah, it's a, it's a joy and an honor to be with all of us here in this special moment. And we also link in with all our co-workers in the many other meditation meetings which are now simultaneously going on. So out of silence and observation comes eventually what the Tibetan calls a completed point of view. So in our nation's work today, we will have a look into a possible method towards this end. How, how can we do this? How can we achieve a completed point of view of our nation? And uh, of course, at our level of consciousness, this can only be approximated. We can say that there are two conditions, two factors of central importance um, in this work. One is our assemblage point, the point of identification from which we do this work. As we have seen in previous sessions, it's the stool of the director in the center of the head. It's here in the center of our head where we stand as the director of our own life, as the conscious soul in incarnation, or as the conscious self as Asajoli calls it. As the conscious self on the individual level, we can assume the function of the conscious self for a collective entity. We can only do for a greater whole what we do for ourselves. Yeah, so we have practiced this in previous sessions and we will continue to do this uh, today also. But today we will focus on this added step that is actually doing this work as a group. So we'll have a closer look at this group work. A national group unit can be seen as a research team, as a scientific laboratory, but with a bit of a difference. In a normal scientific setup, we have three distinct aspects. We have the observing scientist, and we have the object of, of uh, observation, object under observation, and then the method and the tools of observation. In our case, uh, this is not so clear. Um, we don't have such clear definitions because actually we ourselves are all three. First, we are, of course, the observing scientist, but then we are also part of the object under observation. We are part of our nation. And thirdly, it is our own subjective antennas with which we observe and interpret our nation. So this is a pretty subjective affair. And subjective in two senses. First in the sense of intuitional, going beyond the rational mind. That's what we strive for. 
but also in the sense that our observations at our state of development cannot really be objective as a master would do, would be able to, to do. So our uh, subjective personal impressions. And this is a shortcoming, but as long as we are aware of this fact and we accept it, um, we are on the safe side. So, yeah, we all have a conditioning. We are all conditioned by our background. And so our vision, our perception is based on that and is biased. And this just cannot be helped. And here it's where the group is coming in as a help because in this rub between our different national and cultural backgrounds and biases, we become aware of our own. This is often, as we all know, as we all have experienced in groups, it's this rubbing against each other is, uh, is often causing an uncomfortable tension. Of course, in an ideal group setting, we just share our, our viewpoints and we balance them against each other. We help each other to round out our observations. Yeah, and in order to get to this good place, in this process, we learn humility. We learn the capacity to hold our own angle more lightly. And when we meet in this humble, soft place, then all contributions are welcomed and respected and valued. And then we come to realize that all of us hold a puzzle piece of the national reality. And we actually need each other to see a fuller picture. So we appreciate each other, even if it's often uncomfortable. Yeah, it's a learning process for each group member and for each group as a whole. The aim is to create a space in which each contribution can be heard with a minimum of friction in the group field. And in order to get there, there is a, a certain skill set that we have identified in our work. Um, so I just want to briefly introduce it. And uh, Alexander, could you put the slide on? Yeah. So the first to register our finest impressions. It's as we previously already practiced, it's as the conscious self sitting on the stool of the director in the center of the head, we listen to all our antennas. From instinct to intuition, the whole spectrum. And it takes practice, we will, we will do it again today in meditation. And the second skill is to interpret and formulate our impressions as concisely as possible. And this is actually a process. Um, we are receiving our subtle impressions in the right brain hemisphere. And then in this process of interpretation, giving words, clothing, formulate, um, these impressions, we bring them into the left brain hemisphere where they can come become um, rational concepts, where they can fit in with whatever else we know. 
make them part of our ratio. Hmm. And that's another skill to be practiced. And the next step is then to present these impressions to the group and uh, hum humbly and harmlessly. Yeah, we we share them as the director and the director is doing this essentialization process of all these many details. And of course, we have to be attentive um, to the group field at any one time to gauge how much detail the group can hold now and to, to do this thin line to on the one hand to give our full experience and on the other hand not to tax the group attention. Um, this, this is the skill that DK calls to share brief but full. And the opposite skill is to listen to the impressions of, of the others and again humbly in a meditative way to give to really give space to them to reserve judgment even if these impressions rub us the wrong way and don't make sense or contradict our own and make the effort to listen also what is being expressed between the words. It's always, we need always a lot of patience and tolerance to listen to each other, as we all know. But uh, when each group member makes this effort of fine tuning the sharing in the other group members, it's easier then to make this effort to listen, to give space to them and to really try to get what the other wants to say. Okay, so, so this requires from us uh, to hold a state of fine-tuning and stability. It's, it's, it is an effort. So it's holding attention together. It's the tension of diversity within a unified field. And when we succeed, it's, we become like a miniature lab for how a whole nation must also learn to include their minorities and to bridge their polarities. So we do this holographic work for our nation. Mm. And uh, with practice, um, this, this just becomes a habit in the group. We come into this group field and we get into this space that we are creating each time. Um, it becomes a finely tuned, coherent group field where we are alert, intent, inclusive, poised. And this quality of the group field is essential for the subjective research group. When we hold this, then the higher forces can play on such a telepathic group field. And the soul of the nation can begin to express itself in and through it. So it's precious. Yeah, so it's an ongoing process of observing, formulating, synthesizing. And in the process, the group becomes a magnet 
a magnet which can pull up the personality forces and pull down the soul forces of a nation. And bring the soul and the personality of the nation into relation. This is quite a tall order. And um, in our experience, the creation of national snapshots um, is a great exercise, which actually employs all of these skills. It's the snapshot is, is a, uh, observing and formulating and essentializing together as a group what the group perceives about our nation in the present moment. And uh, as I said before, it's good to go about this humbly, simply, not to have too many expectations of completeness. These observations are like snapshots that uh, deal with what is now. And next time there will be another snapshot. And this humility really also leaves us free to, to experiment, to come each time afresh to our nation. And each trial brings more facets and details. So it's like a kaleidoscope. Each time a little bit a different angle and each one contributes then to a more and more inclusive picture, revealing gradually more and more of the roots and of the higher levels and the higher point of synthesis. And when a group engages in this exercise, it has a pulling up effect on the group. There, we develop a greater sharpness, greater ability to focus and seeing things from a higher point of synthesis, also becoming more elastic. Um, so we would like to encourage you to try it out in your groups, to do from time to time a snapshot or for a while to, to, to each time um, give some time to such a snapshot. And of course, when you're ready, it would be very nice to have your snapshots here in the lab so we can all benefit from them it enlarges our perspective about other nations and uh, yeah, our world, world view becomes more inclusive. Yeah, so today we also have a snapshot and uh, it's a snapshot about the Jewish people. This day we are now entering into Capricorn and this is quite timely for this snapshot because the Jewish people have a Capricorn personality. And in our Jerusalem group, Hechal, we are working with this method of subjective research uh, with the Jewish people for more than 25 years now. And we think it may contribute some points of value to your own national research, although the Jewish people are technically not a nation. DK says, the Jews are not a nation. Esoterically, they are the seed or originating germ of mankind, and hence their scattering in every nation. And uh, DK has given a lot of attention to the Jewish people in his writings. So we have a great amount of information 
um, for example, about the esoteric history that goes back to the first solar system. And also a lot of analysis of character of the Jewish people, including, of course, also the astrological and rheological information. And also DK gave an assignment to Asajoli to help the Jewish people towards their next step. And Asajoli worked for many years on it, producing a lot of material also uh, that we have studied and that we in Hechal are continuing. The challenge with this collective is that it is so ancient and that it is spread out all over the planet. So how can we as a group achieve a rounded out grasp of this planetary phenomenon, past and present. Um, I think because it is such a planetary phenomenon, um, it helped us, or it forced us to develop this methodology of a subjective research, which we just described. And we also use the psychosynthesis model for it. We also had the help of a special meditative alignment, which DK gave to Asajoli specifically for this work. It's called the Pinnacles Meditation. And some of the aspects of it uh, we use also here in the lab in our Pinnacles work. So through combining our own findings with those of DK and Asajoli, um, we have developed over the years a felt sense of this entity, a more synthetic grasp of its role in humanity. So in a general snapshot, we cannot really do justice to this seminal phenomenon, but it gives a taste. So I'm giving over now to Helen in Jerusalem to give us this snapshot. Oh, thank you, Uta. Yes, we, the Hechal group, will bring a taste of the Jewish people with a snapshot of this people. And the Jewish people is like the stem cell of present humanity. There is a Jewish joke that says, a Jew is like anybody else, only more so. There are roughly 15 million Jewish people on the planet. And they are roughly divided into three equal parts. One third is located in Israel. Another third in the United States of America. And the third part of the population is dispersed in all nations. And they are very well connected, creating a quite cohesive web over the planet. So we can say that the Jewish people has a strong physical presence in spite of their small numbers. According to DK, the Jewish people represent at this time the solar plexus center of the planet. The solar plexus of the planet. And in their emotional body, this solar plexus power is indeed pronounced. 
self-assertion and self-expression and goal orientation are very strong. Often, we find a sense of arrogance and pride, like we are the chosen people. And at the same time, there is also an ingrained sense of rejection, of inferiority and victimhood. Now the Jewish mind is famous for its brilliance. It's like a multifaceted diamond of endless creativity. Its genius puts the Jewish people on the forefront of almost all areas of human endeavor. The Jewish personality, the Jewish personality is on the third ray of active intelligence and has a Capricorn sun, like Uta mentioned before. So the personality is a third ray and a Capricorn sun. The Jewish soul is on the first ray of will and power and has a Virgo rising. And we also sense a lot of fourth ray in the Jewish makeup somewhere. Through this uh, profile and through its ancientness, the Jewish people is closely connected to the will of God. They seem to have a direct line to God and therefore a special access to the divine plan and to what needs to be manifested. This, the Jewish people holds for eons the coordinates for humanity. From the past into the future. And it also seems to hold the secret of manifestation. The great gift of the Jewish people is to bring the highest into the lowest, thus creating a vertical line connecting the heavens with the earth. This dynamic sets up an intense vertical force field. And it definitely brings its own problems. During its long, long history and its presence in every nation, much karma has been accrued. So the Jewish people grapple with the combined glamours of the first and the third ray, authority and manipulation. In addition, the double earth signs of Capricorn and Virgo 
create a strong focus on matter. And this strong vertical focus often causes a blindness to the surroundings, which results in an attitude of aloofness, of secrecy and separativeness. This mix of great aptitude and separativeness on the side of the Jews has caused jealousy and fear in the non-Jews. All these factors together have produced the phenomenon that we now call anti-Semitism. It is a global, multi-tangled knot of wrong relations. A wrong relations which DK called the main obstacle to world peace. A lot of work still lies ahead. The key to the resolution may lie in the emergence of the new group of world servers. For the first time in the history of the planet, there is now a group which can take over the keys and the coordinates which the Jewish people have held for humanity for so long. And this may ena enable the Jews to, ful to fulfill their innermost yearning to find their place and to find their peace in humanity. And then to be a nation among nations. Thank you for being here. And I'm passing over to you, Uta. Yeah. Let's just give a moment of silence and of breathing to let this snapshot sink in and yeah, become centered again. So let's get ready for our meditation, which will be quite similar to the meditation we did last month. It's again an observation of our nation. So whoever would like to, you can have pen and paper ready so you can uh, record any impressions even during the process because 
a pretty involved process with several stages. It will have again the three parts like last time. We will first establish our telepathic intergroup field as part of the Planetary Ajna Center and then identifying as the conscious self of our nation. We observe our nation on the various planes and then just for a few moments we will stand with the Jewish group on the Jewish pinnacle. And we will close the meditation today with the great invocation in Hebrew, followed by three silent Oms. Let us sound these Oms inwardly and at the same time listen to the silent sound of the other Oms as well. Yeah, and just um, about the sharing that we will do afterwards. Let us practice our skill set. We will give a minute or two of silence so that we can formulate and record our impressions. And it will be very valuable to share them later in full in your national groups. We encourage you to do so and to keep a journal of your impressions. It's, it's building up. <clears throat> yeah, but for the sharing in this larger group today, it will be more valuable to share our own in a process which is each other and not so much the specific details about our nations. So for example, how did I experience myself as the director? What was difficult? What did I learn from this exercise? Or any new questions that came up? And not so much uh, going through all the details of, of, uh, of our impressions. Um, and one more point, um, we do this meditation as part of a national group, national group unit. So for those of you who don't have a group yet, perhaps it is good to imagine one. Imagine having co-workers and doing this meditation together with them, standing together with them on the pinnacle. Um, yeah. Okay. Hey.